first time going to the studio was I was still in foster care. I went to the studio, but it was a back door. Like, niggas, it was not a studio. Like, I met, I searched online for a studio, and it was like, yeah, we got a studio. Uh, so I went house. there. It was somebody crib. They had me in the attic, bro. Like, no cap. And I don't know what the fuck it was. I thought they were trying to back door me, like, take my money. But I got the fuck up out of there, man. It was crazy. That was the first time. And then I, I so it wasn't really a studio, but that's the first time I actually attempted, attempted to, to. But then the first time we go into a studio after that was around um, 2018. I dropped my first song called Therapy. Okay. That was more of an emotional story. It was about mm-hmm. me being like sexually abused as a younger girl and stuff like that. So that was the um, first time I ever been in the studio. I see that you're like open and up talking about that more. Are you like past it or like how? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm healing past it. Okay. And that took time? It took a very long time. Do you feel like you was going through something mentally with that, or? I was going through mental, mental problems, PTSD, a lot of trauma, and it was, it was just a lot. A lot of, it's a lot of heaviness I was holding. Okay, and how did you, I guess, overcome that? Did you go to, like, workshops and stuff? I'll pray a lot. Okay. I used to have a, I, I, I used to pray a lot, um, had a deep, deep relationship with God. Um, and just like over the years, you know, just meeting new people and mm-hmm. learning to trust people again and, mm-hmm. you know, creating my own family and music as well. Mm-hmm. So all of that played a part in me getting myself out of that dark place. Okay. Okay. And do you still speak to your family at all? Man, them niggas could get the fuck out of New York. <laughs> okay, because you know you getting lit right now, so I can see people spinning the block like, I'm so sorry. They better stay where they at. <laughs> okay. All right, so you did um did anybody specific help you get through it, I guess? Did, like, you need a friend or, like, someone helped you along the way getting through it? I mean, I had... Pa- anybody. I had pastors... And I had a lot of, um, I had my godmom, you know, like a lot of mentors in my life. Mm-hmm. Friends, really, they didn't really understand me with that shit because I never really was open to voice it with them. Okay. You know, I, f- I first shared my story in 2018. Okay. So in that space, they didn't know anything about what I was going through. So yeah. I mean, we, we linking up to smoke weed and escape that shit. You okay. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and do you feel like you use like drugs as a skateboard? Well, not drugs, like weed or something, or liquor to, or something. I used to pop perks. I used to abuse it when I got um prescribed it and shit. I used to use perks a lot. I used to drink a lot, and you know, I used to always tell myself I'm not gonna be a drunk because my aunt was a drunk growing up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then I was just like, I kind of understood why she was some a drunk. people result to drugs and shit. It's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. So I was just. Popping pills and shit, but I really got out of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I really got out of that phase of my life. Like, yeah. So music kind of helped with all that stuff. Music is the reason I feel like I'm still here. The clip may be done, but there's still more to come. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And while you're at it, check out our website at talkofthetownshow.com. Let us know what you think.